everybody, it is Carrie Steller, host of In the Girls Corner, and uh, today we have a very, very, very exciting episode for you. I have a very exciting episode for you. Uh, gonna be doing a lot of MMA news, a lot of Olympic stuff, and I wasn't even gonna do anything until I turned on Facebook today, because I was a little bit tired from doing the super ugly show on Tuesday with uh, Richie and John. Had a great time with them, and last night I did the Lee West show with Leality TV, and with Lee West, and it was fantastic. I had a great time, uh, lots and lots of fun, doing a lot of podcasts, branching out, um, doing some interviews, so a little bit tired, but um, I figured what better time than the present to do a show for you beautiful people, because someone's got to do it. I mean, people are going crazy out there. You had the press conference for UFC 202, Diaz McGregor 2, um, Nate Diaz and Conor McGregor went ham, started throwing bottles at each other because Conor McGregor showed up 25 minutes late. So about, I don't know, a minute and a half, two minutes into talking, from what I understand, Nick Diaz ushered Nate to leave. You know, gave him a little, let's get out of here. And he did, and as they were leaving, they, um, you know, do, did what they always do. The Diaz brothers gave big fuck yous to Conor McGregor's camp and um, team and all hell broke loose, and I don't know who threw the first bottle, but there were water bottles being thrown, there were monster energy drink cans being thrown, there were tapes being thrown, it was insane. There was just a lot of mayhem going on at that press conference, and what everybody fails to realize, um, Vegas is a whole different animal. I've been to Las Vegas twice. For uh, pool tournaments with APA, shout out to uh, you guys. You guys are awesome. I miss you. Wish I could definitely uh, start shooting again soon. One day. But anyway, um, so I've been to Las Vegas twice, and I know that is a whole different animal. You know, in Vegas, you can buy a hooker, but you can't smoke pot. Hence why Nick Diaz was suspended for as long as he was and fined oh, a ridiculous amount of money of $100,000. $100,000 is just far too much for a player. I'm sorry. And considering that when he fought... He fought that fight against Anderson Silva, who was on steroids, and that's okay. And hookers are okay, but, you know, you can't have a plant or any kind of uh, seed or anything else. Anyway, also, you apparently can't throw water bottles and have a fight at a press conference. And because of that, in light of that, both teams have been uh, banned from all press events, um, media events, and the weigh-ins on Friday, which is tomorrow. Uh, they are allowed at the fight Saturday night with the exception of Nick Diaz. He's allowed to go to the fight. However, I don't know where they're going to have him because he's not allowed to sit within the first six rows of the octagon. He's not allowed to corner his brother, Nate. Um, he can't really do anything. Uh, so, I mean, I'm sure he's probably going to sit backstage but I know he can't even be in the locker room. He can't be anywhere near those people to talk to his team, to talk to the camp. To, he can't do shit, which is absolutely ridiculous and terrible. I mean, I get it. It's Vegas, and I get it. It's rules, and I get it. It's in Nevada State Athletic Commission. I get it. Vegas, you're an asshole. Sorry, I'm not trying to be a dick, but um, it is what it is. I've been there a couple times, and uh, you know, I think that that's just the most asinine shit I've ever heard of in my life. Oh, P.S., I almost got arrested in Vegas for trying to hail a cab on the streets because apparently in Vegas, you're not allowed to do that. And the cop first thing's out of his mouth, what are you guys from New York? Yeah, the fuck I am, the city where you can walk across the street and go, hey, I need a cab. Um, can't do that in Vegas. I don't know why you would, I mean, I get why you would have fights there, but like, now I get why they want to have them in New York because it's just stupid and it's insane. And to ban... Uh, Nick from the fights, from for being in his brother's corner is just really ridiculous. I don't know if he was banned from the last one again because I don't remember if he, him and Connor fought in, I can't remember where that fight was. Um, so, anyway, it's really stupid. Um, so I don't really like that. I'm not very happy about that. But that's the latest news with Diaz Brothers, with the McGregor fight. Uh, from what I understand, there is absolutely going to be um, definitely fines. There will most likely be, um, I, God, they said a lot of things are going to happen. There's going to be fines. There's probably going to be a lawsuit or two, and there may be suspensions. But, you know, the UFC likes to make their money, so that's not going to happen until after Saturday. So you will 
most likely, I'd say about 95% sure that you're going to get to see Conor McGregor and Nate Diaz go at it again for the second time. Um, but after, you might see them being suspended. So, which is, again, stupid, considering the fact that you've had John Jones. Sorry, I'm not going to be, you know, the bear of bad news. John Jones is an asshole. John Jones is fucked up, you know, press conferences, fighting with uh, fucking DC. And he, I mean, the guy's just an asshole. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Not so sorry. And it's just, you can see the UFC loves to play their favorites. And all of a sudden, John Jones may not have failed his drug test. Okay. Um, sure on that. So you got that going on. Um, really big. Uh, what else do we got going on? Oh, big shout out to MMA Bug. I, it was when I was doing a little shout out there to Lee West and to um, Super Ugly Show. I want to say a big shout out to my peeps over there. You guys are awesome. I'm going to be seeing you guys Saturday at Jackhammer Promotions for uh, lockdown and next Sunday down at um, Mulcahy's. Pretty excited this Saturday. Uh, Jackhammer Promotions is going to be at Sons of Italy after party UFC 202 at Lily Flanagan's in Iceland. Be there. I will. Um, what else do we have going on? Pretty excited about that. Before the lockout happens, so, you know, I'm going to be doing those two fights. And then I know I have um, Fight Club Champion in October at um, the Robert Tree Hotel with Jay Cologne and uh, Beast Close Unlimited. That was very nice to send me a bunch of stuff a while ago. And uh, I seriously still do very much appreciate that. Um, really, really nice of you guys. Can't wait to come to your fight. Uh, I'm going to be bringing an MMA bug with me, you know, Long Island coming to New Jersey, what, what? Very excited, very excited. Big things are on the horizon, and Jake Cologne and Fight Club champion had a fight in uh, Bolivia, so they're making moves. Um, big, big things, big things are going on. Very excited. Okay, and on to the Olympics. Very exciting. A lot of things have happened, a lot of great things in, um, I, you know, what I'm going to consider the world of mixed martial arts. You have Kayla Harrison winning her second Olympic gold in judo. Beautiful. Awesome girl, great. She's doing great things. Um, two two medals is pretty great. You know, my girl, homegirl Ronda Rousey got the bronze, which is awesome anyway when she won hers. So, you know, anybody that gets to that stage at that kind of competition, you really can't say much bad about it. Um, it's just great all around. These are the best of the best of the best athletes. So uh, congrats, congratulations to Kayla Harrison. And um, a big congratulations to... Helen Marilis from the United States. She be I can't pronounce her last name. Swari Yoshida from Japan, who was um she I believe won quite a few gold medals. And uh, so yeah, so congratulations to Helen Marilis for winning the first gold medal in United in, in Olympic history for the United States of America in women's wrestling. Congratulations! I think that's awesome. Very excited about that. Uh, Simone Manuel, she took home, holy crap, um, two golds and one silver. That's pretty amazing. She won her first gold, and it was the first female African-American to win the gold in uh, her event for swimming. And I thought that was great, and then she won another one. So fantastic hats off to you. Um, a big congratulations to the Beast, Michael Phelps. I don't even think you're human. Um, that's just huge what you accomplished with your 22 medals. Um, big, 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 big accomplishment. And I think this is his last Olympics. So congratulations, Michael Phelps, and on your beautiful family. Beautiful things are happening for you. Um, next, we will talk about Katie Ledecky. She won four gold medals and one silver. It, one of the races that she had, it was like watching someone just swim laps in a pool, and all of a sudden you realize she was in a race. Because I didn't see it when it happened. So that was pretty incredible. Uh, she's she's a, a, an animal, which is fantastic. Um, Allison Fox, she won the silver medal uh, in racing. And the woman that she had won against, uh, that, that had beat her by way of shoving her torso into the uh, race. I can't remember her name. But she won the first gold medal for, um, I believe, Bahamas. So, um you know, sorry that I can't remember her name, but it is what it is. Still, beautiful, beautiful things going on in the Olympics. Congratulations to Simone Biles for getting four golds, one silver, and uh, no, four golds, one bronze. Her bronze was uh, only because she lost to Laura Hernandez, who is uh, another fantastic uh, gymnast. She won the silver medal for beam, 
and um, that United States did fantastic, but they got beat out on the theme uh, by this lovely lady. Uh, Sa I believe her name might be pronounced Sine Weavers or Weavers. She is from the Netherlands, and that was their first Olympic gold for gymnastics um, for the women's theme. So congratulations to her. That's just a beautiful thing. And yeah, again, Simone Biles really did great. And Lori Hernandez, congratulations because in 2020, when you're 20 years old, you're going to be the head of the women's gymnastics team, I have a feeling. And uh, congratulations to Allie Baseman for coming in with um, the you know gold all around for the women's gymnastics uh, team and for the silver in floor underneath Simone Biles. Uh, congratulations to all the ladies in the Olympics. And one more person that I didn't mention, um, and that was just because I went through a lot of people, but we're going to go to diving, and that was uh, Michael Hickson from United States of America getting silver, and I watched that, and they went through a lot of crap. Uh, this cat hair, I can't get it. There it is. Anyway, they went through a lot of crap that day. It was really, really, really windy, so the next day he had a better performance, but uh, I can't remember the, guy, the other guy's name that, that just did absolutely horrendous, and he had won many, many golds. So you never know what could happen. Anything could happen on any given day in any given sport, and um, just a lot of big things are going on. And then I'm going to segue into a little bit of, um, I don't know, I feel like a little, a little special thing here going on. And um, it, it's pretty crazy what's going on. I hear a lot of people are really, 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 really complaining. And a lot of people are really angry about, you know, Donald Trump and his mouth and Hillary Clinton and her lies and, you know, all this stuff that's going on. And people are really angry. And they keep on saying, you know, oh, these are our two choices. Well, they are, but there are other people that are trying to get into the polls to get to the debate so that you can see their name on the ballots and you can vote for them. And there is Jill Stein running for the Green Party. You have Gary Johnson running for the Libertarians. And I believe um, also uh, another Republican who's running as liberal will be um, Evan McMullen running. And I really do, I did like Gary Johnson until... You know, uh, reading about that, he's really into the fracking thing, and that's extremely terrible for the environment. And I have put up a big video about that. Shared with my friend Jenny Gatos, that was awesome um, about what's going on with climate change. And I mean, I've been talking about climate change for years. It just tagged my cousin in there, um, Shannon, that I, I told her before the movie 2000, not 2012, before the movie uh, Day After Tomorrow came out. I said, there's going to be some shit going on. The mother nature ain't happy. There's crazy things going on in this world. And, uh, so, you know, you got to really be conscious about what's going on. But, you know, a lot of people are bitching. And, and I get it. We're all angry. I'm mad, too. But you know what? Nothing is going to happen unless you educate yourselves and you know what's going on. Um, Jill Stein is for the Green Party. She's, you know, she's, I, I like what she's got to say about, um, you know, uh, re renewable energy and all sorts of stuff. So she's great. And, um, uh, and Evan McMullen is fantastic. He was an ex-CIA agent, and he's dealt with terrorists on a, um, one, you know, like on a grand scale. He's dealt with them amazingly. So his whole thing is that nobody running right now is able to um, deal with the terrorist situation. They don't have the credentials, and he does. So right now we are in a very, very, very um, detrimental time, and it's a very dangerous situation really what's going on in our world you know you have people fighting over religions people fighting over their skin color you have people fighting over everything people just want to fight and people just want to riot i mean what's going on what is it in missouri where um the, that um the armed robber got uh, shot and um he was robbing stores and he was going towards the public and he got shot so um you know, people are now burning down buildings and stuff and, 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 and uh, businesses and ruining their own city. You know, what is that doing? Nothing. So, um, you know, people are angry and I do understand there's a lot of bad shit going on out there. The cops definitely need to have some kind of a revamping and, you know, um, maybe retraining in their field not to be so gung-ho and so, you know, what's, I don't even know how to put it, but... Getting mad and just burning shit down and rioting and fighting and screaming and yelling and posting on Facebook a negative, 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 negative isn't doing anything. It's not fixing anything. I've said it once before and I'm going to continue to say it until people wake up and realize what the fuck is going on. 
You know, negativity seriously breeds. Look at how angry people, I've never seen the world so angry as it is right now as what's going on. So I'm sorry to have ended this on a serious note, but I just definitely think that people need to really start, you know, taking, respons bleh, taking responsibility for themselves, taking responsibility for their actions, um, stop being so mad, stop and smell the roses. There's a lot of things that need to happen. There's a lot of changes that need to happen. And we can really make it happen. It's just, you know, everybody's got to get their heads out of their asses and kind of join together and join forces, so to speak, and, you know, hug our hate, as I say it all the time, because that's really, I mean, nothing else is working. Really, little to nothing else is working. So what are we going to do? You know, uh, I don't know. I don't really know exactly what the answer is. Oh, and I want to give a big message to everybody. Everybody. This isn't just for young people, and this isn't just for women. This is for men. Respect yourselves. And this is not even pointed to anybody specific. This is just in such a generalized statement just as to what I see going on in the world and what I see going on in social media and what I see going on in everyday life. People need to respect themselves and respect their morals. Now, mine are different than yours. What is acceptable to me might not be acceptable to you. What was acceptable to me yesterday isn't going to be acceptable to me tomorrow. Your wants and needs change on a daily basis. And they're going to change maybe on, on a minute to minute basis. So you might just want me to get fed up with something and say, fuck it, I'm not doing this shit no more. You know what I mean? So really, really, really know what you want in life and know your needs and your expectations. And don't take any less than that. And don't let anybody convince you that you're, you know, being too picky or too this or too that. Because respecting yourself and knowing yourself enough to make a decision that's great for you and you only, it's not bad. That's not bitchy. That's not um, anything arrogant. That is just a beautiful thing. And more people need to understand that and get that message. And I urge parents to teach your kids that. Teach your kids to respect themselves. Teach your kids to respect others. Teach your kids to respect you because what we have now is a problem going on of a lot of people that maybe weren't taught to respect themselves. Maybe they weren't. And maybe that's why you have people, you know, shitting on other people, not literally, figuratively, figuratively speaking. Um, you have people being terrible and awful to other people. People getting beat up. People getting cheated on, lied to, you know. And it just seems to be a really big trend and if not, just a really big problem. And it stems from something. And I don't know if it's a taught thing because I don't think you're really born to, um, you know, be an angry individual. I think that people are just taught that way. And um, it's an environment, not environmental as in like the atmosphere, like as in your surroundings, you know, your surroundings, who you hang out with. That does have a big reflection on you. And um you know, I, I, I've always been in the business of cutting people out, and that's not an arrogant thing. It's just if I feel that you're bringing me down or um, bringing my energy to a different level that I don't want it to be, see you later. You know, I've done it to boyfriends. I've done it to girlfriends. I've done it to family members at times. You know, because even sometimes you just need a break from people in general, and it's not a bad thing either. A little you time before a little we time is not a bad time. So... <laughs> You know, don't let people make you feel bad for wanting to do something for yourself. Don't let people make you feel bad for wanting certain things for yourself and not take anything less than that. And that's really what I can leave you with because maybe if more people got that and more people practiced it, um, and I even falter, I'm not, I am no guru. I'm not, you know, I am not this like, I have it together all the time. I have serious moments of self-doubt and moments of uh, panic and, you know, my bipolar tendencies and stuff. So, you know, I mean, I'm just giving you advice that I would give to myself and I would hope that if there was somebody that saw me struggling that maybe they would give it to me. And, you know, don't think I don't watch my own videos sometimes. Like, oh, hey, you know, that's some good shit you said right there. And um, maybe I've heard it from somebody else. I don't know. But all I know is that, you know, it's just... We all got to make a change and we got to do it together. And um, it's it just something's got to give. So I urge you guys to get out there. Have a great weekend. Talk to each other. Don't yell. 
watch your language, not even in the way of curse words, because they're just words in the way that you say things and how they're delivered and, you know, just be nicer to each other. And, 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 you know, if someone smiles at you, smile back. It's for free. It doesn't cost anything. You know, everybody used to make fun of me when I was younger because I've always been a hugger and uh, I don't see anything wrong with that. I think hugging people is a great, uh, it's, it's, it's a form of, um, sincerity and endearment and I think more people should do it so get out there give your friends a hug tell someone they love them because you don't know what's going to happen here today gone tomorrow you know you, you could literally walk out of the door and get hit by a flying toilet bowl seat at any given moment so you know what hug your friends love your family have a great day have a pleasant weekend I hope you guys really um oh and enjoy UFC 202 so have a good one See you guys next week in the Girls' Corner, where MMA meets beauty and a little of everything else. Bye.